to another edition of Cooking with Kathy and Friends. Today, I have my dad's fiance, Denise. Mm -hmm. The most beautiful lady I know, and everybody knows her word agree. Today, she's going to cook her famous tomato pie recipe that she's altered a little bit um, from other recipes she's gotten. And they all have fresh ingredients in it from my dad's garden. Um, my boys... Beg for her tomato pie, and because she spoils them, she makes them. <laughs> now, Denise, tell them about how we met. We met when I was the assistant principal at Trinity High School, mm -hmm. and Kathy was an English teacher, and that's right. Yeah, that's how we met. She was my boss. Yeah. She was my boss. I had to evaluate her and all that hard stuff. Yes, yeah, she had to see how great of a teacher I was. <laughs> and um, and then I introduced her to my dad, and the rest is history. And that's been how many years ago? Almost 15. 15 yeah. years ago. Anyway, now, we're going to get started. We're going to show you all the ingredients. We'll show you step by step so you can make this at home. Even if you don't like tomatoes, you're going to love this recipe. And it's different from others. Okay, you get fresh basil, and again, I, I don't really measure how much I have. It's just I pick two or three stalks and shred them up, cut them up. You roll them up like this and then cut them. That's a good way to cut your basil. There's a cup of mozzarella cheese and a cup of uh, cheddar cheese, which, again, is fresh shredded cheese. And you probably need about a cup of Parmesan cheese shredded. <clears throat> fresh onion. You won't use that much onion. And garlic. <clears throat> That's fresh Fresh like that jar, no, that jarred, comes, that comes, jarred garlic. Yes, it's jarred. But still, okay, it's not dry. And then you take one egg and whisk it. And we're going to add one cup of Duke's mayo. And I, of course, use the light mayo. You can use the regular mayo, but when the pie, you really can't fail. Y'all, she tries to like de de fatten as I do um, every recipe she does. <clears throat> And just whisk the mayonnaise and egg until it's really good and smooth. And then you're going to add. Uh, I'm going to be sanitary. It's your own kitchen. <laughs> I know that people are watching. They'll say, "Where are your gloves?" <laughs> so. <laughs> well, um, I'm not sanitary in my own kitchen if I'm eating it. And I just put a big handful of uh, fresh Parmesan cheese in there. So really, that probably is a cup. Yeah, it probably is. I don't measure anything. I learned that from your dad. Well, he, I used to measure everything. I don't either. He taught me just to go by my flow. <laughs> okay, and then, of course, you have your pie crust. And you can use frozen. And this is a... Um, this is pre-baked. No, what is, yeah. I mean, you baked it. I baked it, and it's one of those that you roll out a uh, Pillsbury dough. And oh, so you didn't make the one already in the pan? No. That came already. Okay, you put it in your own pan. Did, yes, yes. I bought one of these cheap little okay. pans. And then I just put the dough in it. Okay. And then one, a real important part that the first time I ate tomato pie, I realized that um, it was just too runny, was the fact that no, this was actually a Paula Dean recipe, but she didn't say anything about taking the tomatoes, putting salt on them, let them sit for like 30, 45 minutes, and then you blot it. And that's, it's sort of like with uh, eggplant. It gets that extra moisture out so your pie's not so soggy. So I've already sliced them and I have put the salt on them. And so now I'm going to... Now this is what, five or six like medium it's, sized it's tomatoes? Five, yeah, I think it's about six tomatoes. And, and I know a lot of these recipes don't call for as many tomatoes, but if I'm eating a tomato pie, I want to taste tomato. Right. Not a lot, a lot of dough and mayonnaise. Right. So I put a lot of extra tomatoes in it, and I think that's what makes it so much better too. And really, for those of you out, out there who garden, if you have an overabundance of tomatoes, this is a great way to use them. And it is so good. Mm-hmm. I never would have thought to do this step. Well, like I said, I haven't seen a recipe yet that tells you to do this. And I was just reading an article in Southern Living. Again, I, that's probably been 10 years ago. And I thought, well, I'm going to try that next time. And it really made a big difference that it's not as soggy. A little bit more salt. Not too much. Just a little bit. 
and some pepper. Now the fun begins. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to construct the tomato pie. And you just sort of overlap them. And you can see I really put I really put the tomatoes in there. Okay. Once you got one layer. And a little onion on there. So you sort of just layer it like you would a lasagna? Sort of, yeah. And then if you don't like onions, you can leave them out because you know Brittany doesn't like onions. That's right. So I left hers out the other day when I fixed one. And this is garlic. And then this is your mixture of mozzarella and cheddar. And then some fresh basil. And there's a real difference in using the fresh basil versus dry basil. Major difference in the taste. And then you go through, oh, wait a minute. I got a little step. Add a little bit of this to it, just a little bit. Now. Recipes call for like two layers. I do. Oh, uh, okay. Because I want to taste tomato. Because well, I can press it down. I don't know how much is across it, but we got plenty of garlic in there. So. Yeah. They don't play more of that. Not right yet. That goes on the very top. Rest it's left now. Go on oh. top. Well, notice I like a lot of cheese on it too. I think I could make this from memory. I mean, I think I could make this without writing it down, just by watching it. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And it's also colorful. I mean, it'll be an appetizing looking pie because of the colors in it. Yeah, and that fresh basil makes it. why it will ooze out and that's why you got full underneath this because but it makes it just golden brown and oozy goozy that's a new word I just created oozy goozy oozy goozy so really i mean it doesn't have, you don't have to do it neatly because it's going to bake it's going to bake it's yeah. going to bake the way it wants to okay that's it now i'm going to take that off right now Again, more cheese. A little bit more Parmesan on top to crust it up. Oh, yeah. And I don't measure. I just fix. I just put as much on there as I like. Let me put that on top. A little green on top. <laughs> that looks like Christmas. And that's it. Voila. Voila. All right. Now the, the pie is constructed, the tomato pie, and we're going to put it in the oven. And you preheat it to 350. 350, middle right. 
And you can see how fat that pie is. Look at there. Let's see it again. Nope, no, it's good. And it takes about 55 to 60 minutes, depending on your oven, it takes about 55, 60 minutes. What I so do, I put it at 50 and then I check it. Check it out for 50. Here it is finished. Here's the finished product. Yummy, yummy. Now, how? What, at what time did you take this out? One hour, fifty it's minutes. Sixty minutes. Sixty minutes. This one took sixty, 60 minutes. minutes. And you can see it's not as high as we when we put it in the oven. It's it sort of shrinks a little bit. But you can also see how how the ooey gooey on top has run over the sides. Mmm. Yes. Now, how good. long does it need to cool before you cut it? At least an hour. I would say at least an hour. Let it cool for about an hour. So make it ahead of time. If you, can, if you can last that long without getting some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and thank you again for coming to another edition of Cooking with Kathy and Friends. This is my dad. And again, Denise is fiance, so they're precious to me. And I'm so glad they were here today. Denise is a great cook. And, and I can't wait to get into that tomato pie. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be eating tomato pie for like the next two or three days. Yeah. See y'all. Bye. -bye. Bye.